Hey guys, welcome back to Ranger Survival and Fieldcraft. I'm Andrew, and what I have for you today is our Bottomlands Survival Kit. Stand by. So we are definitely not in the Rocky Mountains anymore. We are in a place that is called historically the Bottomlands. I'll break that down for you Barney style. What that means is glaciers moved through here, carved out the landscape, deposited a bunch of sediment, and now we have this big beautiful forest. What that means for us is high temperatures, it's hot, very humid, thick vegetation, rolling terrain, and then we have a lot of wildlife in this area especially insects, snakes, large fauna. We've got a lot of resources here as well, which means we get to do a lot of survival playtime. So what I have today is my Bottomlands Survival Kit. Based off a couple of recons coming out here already and checking out the landscape and what resources we have available, tailored a survival kit to this area. Let's go. All right, let's talk our survival tools. We have a lot of cutting edges, included cordage, and then a couple of extras as part of tools for our survival kit. The biggest thing you'll notice is that we've dropped the hatchet and adopted the parang. A hatchet would still work in this area, but being that there's a lot of underbrush, a lot of thickets, a parang or a small machete like this gives us versatility not only to take large sections of material for survival, but then to clear away brush if need to, and then take down even water vines by being able to reach up a little higher with this cutting tool as opposed to a hatchet or an axe to take water vines and use the water from inside that water vine to refill our canteen. But we're going to go with the parang and adapt to our environment and use the parang for a large cutting device in the bottomlands. Next, still carrying that fixed blade knife, more Garberg, high carbon steel, 90 degree spine, Scandi edge for carving and camp craft, a great survival knife for our kit. Still having a saw, a saw is more efficient than a hatchet or a parang and safer for a survivalist to use. We can use this in a confined space with heavy thicket to take the exact material we want rather than using a parang and possibly injuring ourselves, but having a saw is a more efficient way to cut material and process that, so let's go into our kit. Still got a small multi-tool, this is a Leatherman signal, more on that later. Bank line for our cordage for lashing and then a small hank of 550 cord for lashing and camp craft as well. And then finally something we've added for our kit, at least in this area, it's important to have some sort of small shovel or trowel and then biodegradable wipes for bathroom uses. There is a special place in hell for surface poopers out there in the world. If you're a surface pooper, bring a trowel and some biodegradable wipes, dig a cat hole and then do your business and cover it back up so the rest of us can enjoy nature without having to walk through your droppings. But having a trowel and biodegradable wipes as part of our kit means that we can safely use the bathroom out here and leave no trace. These are our tools. All right, for one of our main priorities of survival in the bottomlands, this is our shelter kit. First item is going to be a large 9x9 tarp. This is a heavy duty tarp that I've been using for a long time now. This string up very quickly with our bungee cords and then our ridge line to give us that overhead shelter quickly. We then have a hammock, Eagle's Nest Outfitters hammock that we can string up quickly underneath our tarp to get up off the ground and then stay out of the elements. Combination with that is a sleeping pad. This is just a small inflatable sleeping mat that we can blow up, put inside our hammock to insulate us from the air currents and convection from the air underneath our hammock as we're sleeping to insulate the shelter a little bit and keep us warm. And then we round out the shelter kit with stakes already here so we don't have to pull those from the landscape. We have our shelter kit ready to go to get out of the elements because shelter in the bottomlands is incredibly, incredibly important. But this is our shelter kit. 
Now for our survival priority of medical aid, we have a smaller, more robust kit for routine medical care in the field. Things for blisters, abrasions, lacerations, burns, and then bug bites are going to be the primary focus of this kit, given that we're in the bottomlands and those are the most routine things we're going to see. The kit itself is held in a small yellow soap dish, highly visible. We can make it waterproof by putting tape around the actual tin itself. This holds more items as opposed to our medical tin that we typically have but we're gonna go with this, highly vis, we can grab it. When needed, treat ourselves or someone else. Now our kit is divided into tools, medications, ointments, bandages, gauze, and then our wipes. Now for our wipes, we have insect repellent wipe, in case the bugs get bad, and then we have antiseptic wipes, stinging relief wipes, and then an alcohol prep pad to begin treating any injuries that we have gauze for more severe bleeding, and then our bandages to apply to help stop bleeding and protect that injury, topical ointment, antiseptic ointment to prevent infection, and then finally our medications here. We have aspirin, acetaminophen, anti-diarrhea medication, and medication for aches and pains while we're out in the field for a prolonged period of time. Finally, our tools, safety pins, super glue to act as an immediate dressing, improvised dressing to stop bleeding at the source. We have small tweezers to get those ticks and bugs off of us, a small vial of benzoin ointment for topical aid, and then medical tape to help seal up the bandages, and finally moleskin that can go on blisters on our feet if we get any blisters or hot spots on our feet. But this is a very robust kit, smaller, more comprised items to treat everyday injuries out in the field. Now for trauma first aid, not gonna leave you hanging. We have bandanas and then our sniper veil, to act as emergency dressings and even tourniquets. And then for improvised bandages, we still have or carry a small roll of Gorilla Tape. What can't you do with duct tape or Gorilla Tape to treat injuries? But we can use these cloths here for emergency medical devices like tourniquets or pressure dressings or use materials from the landscape that we know are medicinal in value and apply those as bandages as well. So we still have a way to treat trauma in our kit, like severe bleeding, and a way to apply splints or swath arms or sling arms to treat fractures. So we still have ways to treat trauma or severe catastrophic injuries in our kit, while we still have the smaller kit to treat more routine everyday injuries being out in the bottomlands. Number one priority of survival in this area is water. Now there's a lot of water to be had out here from creeks, we're close to a river, we're close to inlets and small ponds where we can fill up on water. We still have to have a way to filter that water, which is why we have a manual filter here, like this GeoPress Grail, to filter that water because the water is pretty scummy out here if it's not from a running source. We also wanna have ways to carry a lot of water with us. To carry a lot of water with us, we're opting for two canteens and two nesting cups. That way we can boil and purify water if we need to with all of these containers here. But we still have a way to filter the nasty water, get all the particulates, turbidity, and pathogens out of that water, and then fill up our main containers because we want to have a lot of water to carry with us. Shelter and water in this area are incredibly important, so having a larger than normal water kit for survival is going to be important. Fire is still an incredibly important survival priority. To meet this requirement, we still have a robust fire kit, albeit this kit is smaller than usual. We still have matches in a match safe, storm proof, to start fire with tape wrapped around that match case for a flame extender. Same thing for our lighter. We have a lighter with 100 mile an hour tape, 100 mile an hour tape flame extender, and then we've added little piece of bank line to prevent the button from depressing as it travels so we save on fuel. Man-made tinder, wet fire, lights in a wet environment even when completely soaked so this is great for the bottom lands of getting a fire going. Ferro rod, another fire starting tool that we can carry with us. High-vis yellow tape around that ferro rod so we don't lose it. And then the sun is still shining in the bottom lands so we can use the Fresnel lens to access the sun's rays and light tinder that we may find that is dry and exposed to the elements, maybe near a creek or a bank line. Still having a robust fire kit, we've added two more items. A small alcohol stove and then a bottle of alcohol fuel for that stove so we can still cook our food, boil water, and make coffee at our campsite without building a huge fire. This is our fire. All right, land navigation is probably more important now than ever, especially out here. In the Rocky Mountains, we could see for a distance through the trees, but here it is so thick 
and very flat compared to Rocky Mountains. That getting lost out here is something that can happen and has happened. So very hard to terrain associate out here, very hard to find our way, and we need to have a robust land navigation kit. So we have our map, we have our compass, pacing beads, and then we even have the signaling mirror inside or the sighting mirror to use as a signal and the whistle on the bottom of our pacing beads. Flashlight to find our way in the dark. We can use this as a passive signal at nighttime with the strobe to signal for rescue, a GPS to ensure that we are where we say we are, using that GPS to check our position while we land navigate through rough, thick terrain like the one we're in right now in the bottomlands, and then spare batteries to ensure that our GPS and our flashlight are always running in case we're out here longer than we expect. But having a robust lane navigation kit is important anytime we go to the field. For signaling as a priority survival, we have a very basic kit. We have a bandana for visual signal. We can use this for our own purpose, establishing a marker while we're trying to find our way out of the bottom lands. We have a known point to come back to, hang this in a tree, and then search the immediate area. And we have this orange bandana as a visual signal to come back to, to a known point so we don't lose our way. We can also attach this to a pole and turn it into a flag, making it a visual signal as well, even wear it on our head and make ourselves a signal. We still have signals auditory with our whistle. Signaling through the thicket here with a whistle is more advantageous than using visual signals. This is going to travel further through the thicket and people are going to hear this as opposed to trying to see a visual signal through the thicket here. But we still have a signaling mirror anyway to signal search and rescue as well as our headlamp to act as a signal. Use the strobe on this for a passive signal at nighttime or to use it to find our way. But a very small signaling kit out here in the bottom lands. We can still use smoke signals. We can still establish different signals and find our ways to clearing to signal search and rescue. But we have just a very basic signaling kit here. Next survival priority is food. We need to take consideration on what we put in our emergency rations pack. The emergency rations pack could fit into a small quart sized bag like this. We can use just even a small bag like that to put enough food in that bag to sustain us through a day or maybe even longer. But the food in there needs to be focused on putting vitamins and minerals back in our system, giving us carbohydrates, fats, and proteins so that we can operate effectively without exhausting and give us that extra day to make those important decisions in a survival scenario. So this kit has dried fruit to put a lot of vitamins and minerals back into the body energy bars for those carbohydrates and fats. We have protein through these beef jerky sticks along with sodium to put back in our system. Hydration packets in the form of these drip drop packets to add to our water to rehydrate ourselves and get those electrolytes back in our system. And then some hard candies that won't go bad in the heat so we can have something to taste while we're thinking about all the cheesecake we're going to eat once we get back to the world. But having a small rations pack like this is enough to get us through a day, maybe even longer, so we can make those important survival decisions. So a good rations pack for survival priority of food is important. That does it for our bottom land survival kit. I hope you guys like this video. If you did like this video, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, leave me a comment in the comment section. I always appreciate your feedback. I wanna thank you guys for the thing you do for me, for the channel, for your likes, your views, your subscriptions, your comments, your feedback, and your shares. And I'll be back with another video as soon as I can, guys. Thanks. Mm -hmm.